Good morning. Welcome along to the uh, Pivot 3 session for V Brown Bag. My name is Mike Beaver. I'm the Senior Technical Marketing Manager at Pivot 3. And this session is called Why Advanced QoS is the Necessary Control Mechanism for HCI. So if we take a very quick look at some of the infrastructures or some of the uh, workloads that people are running on HCI right now, we see they're still very much in the single workload format. So we see some database, some cloud hosting backup, and all the enterprise applications that you would expect. But the one thing missing from this is them all running on the same infrastructure at the same time. So why is that? Well, when we're still at the very early stage of the HCI journey. We're still a very young market. We're growing, we're maturing. And what we've come to realize is that next generation HCI must do more. We've got to bring in, we've got to keep the criteria for success that we've established, the simple management, the management through VMware or a very simple single interface. We've got to be able to scale. That's what the modular aspect of HCI is all about. It's about that ability to scale and scale very easily. We've got to have extensive data services. So we've got to have all the things that you're used to in your SAN, your snapshots, your replication, your deduplication, your compression, your data services. But we've also got to have consistent performance and we've got to have efficient utilization of that performance. Efficient resource utilization is no longer just about the amount of disk that I can use raw to usable. It's about using that performance efficiently. So what we're seeing from the CIOs that we talk to and from the IT directors is that infrastructure is starting to decline in terms of its import within the data center. A lot of CIOs are telling me right now that I'm not really that worried about what my workload is running on. What I am worried about is guaranteeing the performance and guaranteeing the availability of that workload. And then I have to balance that with being able to run it in a cost effective way and in a way that my users can consume and get the best experience from that workload. So we're moving away from thinking in infrastructure terms and we're moving into a workload centric deployment model. Now, this is all very well and good, but you've got to have a control mechanism. Okay, with HCI, you're now aggregating all of your resources. You're building all of your workloads into the same pool. Everything's contending now. In the traditional world, I could break up SANs. I could break them into disk groups. I could serve different LUNs. I could do some management through the controllers. But I can't do that with HCI. This aggregation has led me into a shared resource scheme for all. So I've got to be able to control. In order to guarantee the workload performance and the performance SLAs that my business requires, in order to guarantee the protection SLAs that my business require, I've got to have an advanced quality of service engine. And Pivot3 has done just that. You can't look at IOPS limiters anymore because IOPS, frankly, are rarely the problem. DIS, SANS, SSDs, they throw out more IOPS than we know what to do with. Latency is the problem, throughput is the problem, and we see this all the time. This is a very consistent message. Pivot 3's advanced quality of service engine takes care of all three of those things. But even better, it takes all three of those things in a policy-based management infrastructure. So rather than having to worry about granular design, granular management for individual VMs, we simply work on a volume basis. This volume is important to me, therefore it gets a mission critical policy. It gets the resources it requires to run. I can swap those policies around, I can change them on the fly, and I can schedule them as well. So I can really do that. What I can give now to a CIO is the ability to guarantee performance to his application owners, the ability to make sure that his applications are getting the protection and the performance they require to deliver that user experience. Now, how does Pivot3 QoS work? Well, the uh, rather complex diagram on the screen beside me is not all that complex. We understand when you create a volume which policy you've assigned to it. We tag the data as it comes through, and that allows us to understand what that volume's doing. 
Now that's then put into an execution queue based on the priority that the volume has at the time of uh, I.O. generation. We reorder the I.O. as they come in into a critical to non-critical basis and write them down. But don't worry, your non-critical policies will never, or your non-critical workloads will never just sit there idling why until a really quiet time. There is timeout values, there is um, guarantees that those uh, I.O. will be pushed through the system um, in their own in due course. But again, we deal with those on the three streams that we manage. We deal with them in terms of throughput, we deal with them in terms of latency, and we deal with them in terms of IOPS. So really taking that comprehensive approach is what allows us to build that QoS engine and really start to uh, run what we need to run when we need to run it. So now we can view uh, HCI as a multi-workload platform. We can deploy applications with confidence that they're going to get the performance they need. What that then allows us to do as CIOs, as IT directors, is to build a set of applications, to build that modular HCI infrastructure that we've always wanted, but also keep our application owners happy to guarantee that throughput, to guarantee that SLA, and most importantly for a CIO, to be able to prove it. Now, that was just an introduction to Pivot3 QoS. If you do wish to learn more, please come and visit us on booth E619 in the Solutions Exchange. It's just down the hall. Uh, we'll be there for the entirety of the show, and we can give demonstrations and much more detail. And on that, that's concluding our session on Advanced QoS. Please stay tuned for a later session on cloud platforms and the autonomous cloud. Thank you very much.